so here we are. I'm going to start working on this carb. Um, I got my rebuild kit today, finally, and it's actually pretty cool. It came with a really complete diagram of all the parts and components, which is nice because I didn't take super great documentation on how I took it apart. <laughs> uh, and it is the correct one. It even has the vacuum actuated pull off there, which is pretty nice. The, to kind of know it's the right part. Talks about disassembly, which obviously we've done most of, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and take it the rest of the way apart because uh, we have some more gaskets that I didn't take out of the previous run. So I just kind of want to get it all as uh, rebuilt as possible since I have all these parts, so I might as well replace them. Um, I've got the carb here and all of my little parts and pieces. So we'll get after it. See how we do. Okay. I tried to throw some more light on this project. Let's see if we can uh, make sense of any of that. Like I said, I've done some car work before, but not on not on a Holly and not on not for an automotive, only for motorcycles. So this is going to be very not instructional and mostly you guys just watching me struggle. <laughs> so I've got some jet parts here and I'm not sure which jet this is for yet but I'd like to replace it if I can find that part well, I know I need to take this part apart so I'm going to go ahead and do that just to make this even harder on myself look at that so clean some dust from the cleaner but it really did get in there really nicely Let's make sure our gasket's the same looks like it definitely is nice okay because this will probably break when I take it off <laughs> usually do so we had a hard cut here I was in the middle of reassembling the carb and we hit Little snag the um, the basically it's like a check valve needle that uh, is in line in the in the circuit there with the uh, acceleration pump um, is missing in my carb and it wasn't there when I disassembled it so uh, I'm over at my buddy Adrian's house we're gonna actually make a new one because I can't find one anywhere online and all the used parts shops I've called have said that they don't have one of my carbs in stock at all as a core so they don't even have that part so we're gonna just turn one on his lathe which I thought would be pretty cool to watch so we're gonna get going with that and I'll show you in more depth what part we're trying to make Are you thinking that's going to stop right at the top of the taper because it's about the same width? Well, I'm going to come out to the edge, right? Sure. And, um, and see if we can feel the taper. If not, we're going to get Oh, I see what you mean. Just like hug one side of the, the bore wall. Right, yeah. And and hopefully catch that the edge of that taper. Right. So, what are we at? We're at uh, 500 and... 
98 or uh, 88 deep. Oh, that's genius. <laughs> I have like one pencil in my whole shop. I just keep losing it over and over and over and over again. Five, eight, eight. Or actually, no, yeah, because we're. That was it, seven. So we're actually five, nine, three. Now, let's see if the. what the center of the hole is. It should get longer, right? Yeah. If you cut and the I, edge. I can't get all the way to the bottom of the taper. Right. Right? And so, yeah. But what we can do is see about. This is going to be a real decimeter measurement. But we obviously, obviously don't want it to go all the way down to like a sharp point, right? Because there's, right. A, there's a hole there. Right. Yeah, it just needs to fill the taper well enough to plug the fuel coming back. Yeah. And if I had pin gauges, we could gauge this quite well. But I don't have pin gauges because I've never needed them. Yeah, well, this is super specific. Yeah. <laughs> well, pin gauges are like gauges that will gauge bores. Sure. See right there, that's a pretty good diameter for that brass piece down there. Oh, sure, yeah, because it's way smaller. Yeah, and hold that straight up and down for me. Well, you're gonna challenge all of my skills right now with that. Okay. <laughs> straight up and down. <laughs> yeah. And then we get our calipers. And we just see kind of how deep that is right there. And that's about 600 thou deep if I... Yeah, 601, so... So we're gonna make this pin right here with just a slight 45 degree chamfer. I don't know, but at the, or just flat. The yeah, just, yeah, just a nice, uh, tiny little flat chamfer, okay. right? And then, so from here to here, right, we're gonna make that point .601. And that's our... That oh, that was the the smaller yeah, we'll drill bit depth. Yeah, we'll start that. We'll go. We'll go six oh one, right? Make sure that, that winds up flush to the top, okay. and then we can shorten it by how much you want. Is there going to be a spring on there? No. Nope. Oh, it's so all this pressure. is all gravity. Yeah, oh, it's pressure. gravity and pressure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So then we can shorten it by how much you want. Um, you know, a few thousandths at a time. Okay. So all yeah. right. Cool. Awesome. Chuck. Oh, we'll keep that in there. Man, ER40 colleagues, they are the business. All right, quarter inch. And who makes this lay? This is AEM? No, th no, oh, no, that's just a uh, sticker. Oh, this is, this, sticker. this yeah. is Bailey. Bailey. Yep. Okay. Adrian this, uh, has made me a part before on this. It's awesome. So He's good at it. This is the first time I'm using, like, Quarter inch collar. Oh, fresh. Yeah. Right out of the wrapper. That's awesome. With it being YouTube, I so want to drop the collar and just <laughs> just to, to, to get some get comments. Your comments <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many of the guys that watch me do this stuff have lathes at home, but. It doesn't matter. It, it's, I think it's very well universal. Uh, common, common YouTube knowledge that if you drop a collet, you just it's exploded. <laughs> And not useful anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I know I watch a ton of machining channels, so I'm sure that uh, a lot of the guys watching this do too. It's all that stuff we wish we did, but don't actually have the money for parts or pieces. Or... Right. And then uh, good old uh, 
Army Surplus Store brass. Oh, right. Yeah. Wander the Army Surplus Store and find everything you ever need. Free pieces of solid brass. Well, <laughs> not free, but not close. Free, but super cheap. <laughs> That's an important off of a mission. off of a Colt 41 Remington, which is just a little bit too cool. And it's removable. Those are live shells. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> don't live. hang anything sharp up here to swing down. <laughs> uh, the, um, Primers, Primers were de deactivated. Nice, good call. <laughs> so yeah, pulled them, pulled them apart, and, and uh, used Croil to uh, deactivate the primers, and then seated the bullets back in. Safety cautious and awesome, all at the same time. It's hard to do because usually safe is boring. Right. This is actually awesome. Too tight. And you had, what was a 25 degree taper? Yeah, so uh, 25 degree. And then from here to here, we're at 0.597. And our diameter. Our diameter actually wound up being 0.2141. So there is version two and bam. I'm super curious now too if uh and we're sitting roughly uh, about fifty six thousandths below your your flange there. Your flange isn't flat. I'm sure it's not. Um, so there's a, 57 thousandths there's a fat kind of feltish gasket that goes in between these parts so sure. I'm sure that's why I just want to see I doubt but I'd be curious if you know it's not that airtight he's the fluid 
also possibly my plunger's not big enough. Oh. Nope, it is. Nice. So. That's a win. Awesome. Woohoo! <laughs> Theoretically, those should be parallel to each other. And they may not be perfectly parallel. I can't. Yeah, they got close enough for government. Right? Yeah, it shouldn't matter as long as it doesn't create in, just incessant rattling in the part. But I don't see why that would happen. Polish it up. Yeah, I'm gonna in the direction that the fuel's gonna run. Oh, that's a good idea. What kind of oil is that? This is WD-40. WD-40? Yeah, it's red because it's got red grease pan in it. Sure. So maybe some of your viewers know who Chris from Click Spring is. And I'm always super jealous of his polished brass parts. <laughs> and so <laughs> if I have the opportunity to polish a brass part, I do it. That's fair. I mean, like... Uh, there's no one on earth that can polish brass <laughs> like that, except for him. I know, I have to look. I haven't, just, I haven't seen uh, that. All right. That fits real nice. Yeah, yeah. Look at those nice little 30 thou gaps. Beautiful. That should flow fuel. I think that will flow plenty of fuel. You shouldn't be able to get it to pop out anymore. Right. But maybe a little. Uh, well, hydraulic pressure will lift it. Right. We're Full hearing pressure. we're hearing air come by, right? Yeah, but it could be around the seal on that. I sure. Mean, it's not perfect. So there's a six inch scale, right? It's for you guys to understand how small this part is, mm -hmm. in the in the measurements we're working with. So there you go. That that one is is one inch. Right. Right. So we're talking like three quarters of an inch long and then really narrow well i mean tapered. technically five hundred ninety-seven thousandths long <laughs> there you go it's looking like a true machinist yeah so gives you an idea of how wide it is we have two nice wonderful little quick spring inspired polished sides i like it that's awesome it's funny you get excited about something silly but this thing is awesome Look at that. That's machined. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we are back at the office here. We got our new jet in. So working with Adrian, super helpful. Um, totally saved my ass on that. I was gonna have to buy a new carb. I I had called a couple of used shops, um, used parts shops for scouts and. Uh, Talk to anything, Scott, a couple different companies, and nobody, nobody's got this part. So we just made one. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna give that a shot. Uh, obviously we kind of had to do some guesswork because there's no specs published for it because I couldn't even find it online. Um, but it seems to be working the way it's supposed to. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing together and see if it'll run. missing part but uh the kit actually came with a solution for it uh this vent uh cap was gone with the with the assembly and it shows the vent assembly here which is actually like comp complicated little spring needle washer setup with a cap on it um but it actually came with this little plunger and i didn't know what it was for 
and it didn't explain what it was for anywhere that I found, although, yeah. Yeah, I never saw, I never could find anything about that plunger, and now I'm fairly confident that that's what it's for. It's got a little tail that, lead that comes through this side, but this fits perfectly in here to keep dust and things out of that orifice, and then it still actually can vent if, it, if that's a, a need. Um, I've, I was reading on some of the forums that that can be tied into a charcoal filter just on stock rigs for like um, emissions compliance, particularly in California, but um, I don't really care about that. So we're not gonna worry about tying it in, but I'm glad we have a cover for it because it's a big open hole that goes theoretically down into the fuel bowl here. So um, not completely open, but I think it has like a like a pathway it takes, but I don't I don't really want that to be a, a path for dirt to get into the bowl, so. We've got it done as far as we can go but before we put it back on the car. We've got our vent capped. We've got our new jet internally. We've got all of our linkage rebuilt. It used to be like bailing wire and stuff. So I went to coat hanger, which is very similar to this stuff. Um, it's a little thinner, but it'll work a lot better than what we had. So the choke can go where it needs to go. The choke's general position is held by the thermal, um, the thermal adjuster here, um, thermal choke, but then this guy can override it when it, when the uh, engine basically gets enough vacuum that it doesn't need to be choked anymore. It yanks this past and then, um, when we set the throttle when it's cold, this will get the cam here set up for the idle. And then basically this is all automated after that. So you set it for idle. It sets this guy, which sets the butterflies at the bottom there for a slight idle. It's kind of already set up there. And then, uh, and then this all opens and shuts as it needs to while keeping the idle a little high while it warms up. So, that should be good to go. Then, this is the fuel pump actuation here. So when we, I can't really show you that well, but when you do this, it will actually pump that plunger. I can't show you very well because the butterflies are blocked by this stand I have it on here. But uh, yeah. Should be pretty close. Uh, I need to throw that nut, on there, that nut there on this guy. So we'll do that and then we are gonna go put this on the car.
Okay, so after lots of testing, we've decided we're not getting quite enough fuel coming through the Venturi's on the, for the accelerator pump. So we're gonna do something different that I don't really understand at all. So Adrian's <laughs> gonna explain it for so, us. So we're gonna, make, we're gonna make the body square, like the pictures of the other gear we got, right? So, but I'm fairly certain we took way too much off of each side to get the square size that we want. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna remake this. But right. we want the diameter that we landed on and then uh, and then we'll do the math there's a um, square inscribed in a circle is a square root of two times the radius of the circle squared so we'll do that math and come up with uh, what we want so yeah, so we got, our, our diameter is just barely under 212. So we'll call it 212 okay. is our is our diameter. And so, let's get out of some paper. What we got. And we're going to put a square inscribed so we're gonna cut all of this away. Right. Right. And our radius is uh, 0.212 divided by two, which is 0 0.106. And then for ease of things, so. It's a calculator? Yeah, the, yeah the, the, there's websites that already have this stuff. So if our radius, <laughs> yeah, if our radius is 106, uh, then the side of our square, so this distance, which I'm going to call out here, is 0 0.1499. Okay. And for those who don't work in 10,000th of an inch, that's 0 0.145 <laughs> or 150. So... So then we just pull down the normal calculator, right? So from here to here is 150, right? So that means if we if we go right here to from this point of the square to this point of the square is 150, yeah. right? And we know that from here to here is 212, so we go 0.212 minus 0 0.150. So that's how much both these shaded areas mm -hmm. uh, are, you know, divided by two to get how much just this height is right here. And we get 31,000, or uh, yeah, 31 thousandths. So we want to take off 0 0.031, but that would give us very sharp corners. Right. So and we everything actually... we got, we got, we want. We got round, so we're gonna take less than that. So. Yeah, we'll probably start at point uh, zero two zero twenty thousandths. Okay. So that'll give us some nice rounded corners. Basically, what that will then give us is that'll give us something more rounded off. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Right. So you'll you'll have these nice rounded. Right corners which will ride nicely in the cavity right right and, and but then you'll have all, and, give yeah. You some, yeah. and you'll have all that room for the fuel to flow by so. all right let's give all it right. a shot
And I mean, that's not click spring polish, but I mean, it'll be good enough for the inside of a car, right? See, version two is all just that's good enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> version one's uh, click, click spring, spring. Yeah. polished, and then uh, and version two is good enough. Yeah. It's fair. There's even probably some burrs on there that it, maybe I'll take off. Well, we can give it a test run and we can clean it up if it yeah. works. All right, so we think we've got it here. So when I romp on the throttle, that is what we're looking for. Big old squirt of fuel. So. But we're running out now. We're running out of fuel, but that worked. So we replaced the spring as well, and now we're getting way more flow. So I think we've got it. Replace that. We replaced this that guy. That wimpy sucker. This guy was super, super dead. And like, I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. We're probably stiffer than you're supposed to be. But I gotta say, it does feel a lot better. So. We're gonna go by feel because we don't have any specs to work from <laughs> and see where we get. <laughs> All right, today I've thrown the car back on and uh, gave her one pump of fuel, fired right up. So I did increase the chokes, aggressiveness, a little bit of the thermal adjustment, um, but that's already a thousand times better. So if anything, the fuel pump might be too aggressive. We'll have to see, uh, but I really, think that we're gonna be in business here. I'm gonna let this warm up. I'm trying to make sure that it can warm all the way up without dying, all the way up through its whole its whole run uh, up to full warm. And then uh, it should have lots of throttle response after that. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, right now what I'm gonna do, I'll show you, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a, uh, a better mount for my spring. So this is the original spring that was on there. It's probably not the original spring, but it's the spring that was there. It's stiffer than the one I threw on there, and I just hooked it to a motor mount, or a motor lift out point. Um, not mount. Uh, I wanna use this one, it's stiffer. I want more resistance on the pedal. Uh, but the one that's there, uh, there's no mount, there's no good location to hook it to for, for pulling against. It's got yeah, a really, it was, it was in a really bad spot originally. And the spot I'm using is still not straight on to the throttle. I like I like the spring to be direct. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's just loud. Um, so I'll come in and show you. So you can kind of see that. That's what I've got right now. That's where it was coming up at this really bad angle. I'm gonna build a little bracket here so it can come straight back here with this spring stretched out, which will be a lot stiffer. I was going to make that part. I have my flat bar here. I was going to make it out of, but uh, I kind of forgot that my grinder broke. So I'm not going to make that today. <laughs> uh, you can hear it hunting. I'm not. Sh I kind of feel like I might have like a vacuum leak, but I'm just sort of babying, babysitting the choke to see if I can get it to get through the warm up stage. Um, definitely not running super well this is what happened the last time I did this too and once it got to warm it was fine but all through the warm-up process it was kind of hunting around and I'm not sure exactly why I, I know it's got enough fuel but I don't know if it's got some other vacuum leak or something I don't know so I kind of wanted to see if I can get to hot at this point and see if I can get it uh, stabilized and then see if it still has power because that was what would happen so once i got it up to idle with normal heat full temp and everything it would it, it didn't have any power <laughs> i don't think it was an acceleration issue except the acceleration pump problem but I, the hunting is something else so let's figure that out but um yeah we'll see how we do all right, Adrian, so the accelerator pump's working great. It still has some sort of vacuum leak, but I'll check, check this out. That's fine. <laughs> All the get up and goes there, but it's hunting and pecking for air or something. So, a little more to do, but thank you, dude. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, I did do some more work on the carb. I found the the carb, not the carb itself, but the uh, the vacuum system. There's a lot of ca there's a lot of vacuum accessories. Some of them are disabled. I got vacuum caps and new vacuum hose. I've been replacing all of that. 
And actually, after I got through all of that, found that the main issue that I was dealing with was actually the PCV. Well, there's actually two PCV valves I found. One's coming right out of the motor on the back, and that's I think that's the stock thing. Feel free to comment and let me know if it's not, but uh, it looks like it's stock. And then the other one is um, probably also stock, but it comes out of the, uh, the valve cover like I'm used to seeing um, in Chevys. Um, really poorly run. I'll show that probably in the next video or something in the next, yeah, probably in the next video, but, uh, it's, it needs to be, uh, replaced like all that. I replaced the one in the back that mainly fixed the problem. Um, uh, but I'm basically just dealing with a lean condition, uh, which is sapping all the power, just not enough fuel. So uh, I'm still working on it, but it is doing a lot better. I think we're going to be, uh, you know, pretty close to drivable. I am going to bring it into the shop. We're getting ready to move out to our property this next month. So I'm going to be moving physically again, again. <laughs> uh, and so we'll, we'll, I'll be running out of time. So in the, in the next few weeks, um, we'll probably be, uh, focusing on that. I'll be trying to take some video of that too. Cause you know, this, this channel is not just about building the scouts going to be a whole adventure aspect of it too. So um, I'm going to do one, I'm going to start prepping up my fly fishing gear for the spring. Like we're getting kind of, kind of close spring finally, uh, it's still snowing outside, but you know, we're getting there. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, like, and subscribe and we'll catch you next on the next one. And, uh, another big thank you for, to Adrian for helping with that part. It was very cool. Uh, and hope you guys enjoy watching that machining.